Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Auto Focus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models, presently in the local market, a luxury mid-size sedan from Mercedes-Benz, the E180 Avantgarde, and a subcompact SUV from Suzuki, the XL7 GLX. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two pickup trucks, the Isuzu D-Max Bondock 4x4 and the Mitsubishi Strata Athlete 4x4. On Autopedia, we'll talk about changing the oil in your car. And together, with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the new Honda CRV as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Auto Focus, and we'll be right back after this short break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of the latest automobile models from Mercedes-Benz. The Mercedes-Benz E-Class is deemed as the heart of the German luxury brand, the model that brings in the most sales worldwide. The E-Class comes in a number of powertrains, trim levels, and exterior packages to suit variances in taste and budget of Mercedes-Benz buyers. Carvey takes a look at the Mercedes-Benz E 180 Avant-Garde. Mercedes-Benz automobiles have always come with unmistakable design elements that make it immediately recognizable. You know a Mercedes-Benz when you see one. As it approaches you on the road, from its silhouette as it passes by and as it moves away. This can also be said about Mercedes-Benz trim levels. Take for example, the Avantgarde. The Mercedes-Benz E180 Avantgarde can easily be distinguished by the Louvre grille with the prominent three-pointed badge placed front and center. In Avantgarde guys, the E180 looks sporty and should appeal to a younger demographic of luxury vehicle buyers, while still retaining the subtle elegance and classic vibe beloved in older generation Benzes. Other notable exterior features include LED high-performance headlamps, heated exterior mirrors that are electrically adjustable, and with spherically curved mirror, and with integrated signal indicators, aero widescreen wipers, with rain sensor. Adding to the sporty vibe of the E180 Avantgarde are the 18-inch five dual-spoke alloy wheels. The E180 Avantgarde is powered by 1,595cc inline four-cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine 
that generates 156 horsepower at 5,300 revolutions per minute and 250 newton meters of torque from 1,200 to 4,000 RPM. The engine is mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission that drives the rear wheels. One can select gears via gear shift knob or the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. There's also the dynamic select for choosing transmission modes including comfort and sport. The Avantgarde is also said to have a suspension system that is tweaked to provide better handling at speed. The E180 Avantgarde, made available locally now, features keyless go start function and comes with black Artico leather for seat upholstery and trim. The multi-function three-spoke steering wheel sports black Napa leather. The 180E Avantgarde also comes with cruise control with Speedtronic variable speed limiter, direct steer system with speed sensitive power assistance with variable steering ratio. The instrument cluster is all digital. Infotainment comes from an audio 20 USB multimedia system with online capability and high resolution media display with a smartphone integration package compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Standard features include central door locking with interior switch and crash sensor, power windows with one touch control and obstruction sensor, thermatic automatic climate control with two climate zones, separate temperature adjustment for driver and front passenger. Avantgarde is equipped with standard and advanced passive and active safety features. Aside from the multiple airbags and three-point seat belts, there's also a tension assist to detect driver drowsiness, electric parking brake with automatic release when moving off. Standard safety features include ABS, acceleration skid control, active brake assist, consistent of proximity and collision warning, on-demand braking assistance, plus autonomous braking function for vehicles ahead and crossing pedestrians, adaptive brake with hold function and hill assist, electronic stability program. The E180 Avantgarde also comes with parking assist with reversing camera. There is a school of thought that says the avant-garde tag benzes are for those who like to drive a Mercedes as against those who like to be driven in one. This could hold true with the E180 avant-garde. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo.
Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. Mazda Philippines is raising awareness of the need to protect endangered species of animals, like the pangoli, an anteater endemic to Palawan. It is also raising awareness of the arrival of its new pickup, the BT 50 4x4 Pangoli. Will people buy a pickup named after an animal in danger of losing their habitat and going extinct? Mazda thinks they will because the BT 50 4x4 Pangoli has all the attributes that people need in a pickup. Attributes the BT 50 share with the Pangoli, the anteater. According to Mazda Philippines President and CEO Stephen Tan, the Philippine pangolin is an endemic and critically endangered species that deserves attention and concern. Like the BT-50, it is a reserved yet highly proficient hard worker. In launching a pickup named after the pangolin, Mazda said it was acknowledging the important role everyone plays in preserving the delicate balance of the environment. The BT-50 4x4 pangolin is powered by a 3.2 liter, five cylinder common rail turbo diesel engine that generates 200 horsepower and 470 newton meters of torque. It can load cargo up to 1,086 kilograms in weight or 1,214 liters in volume in its reinforced cargo bed. The Pangolin cabin can accommodate five persons comfortably in leather upholstered seats. Infotainment comes from a 7-inch touchscreen JVC infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring capability. And it proudly rolls on 17-inch alloy wheels from Rota, an indigenous manufacturer of world-class rims. China's fourth largest automotive company has set up shop in the Philippines. Chang'an Motor Philippines Incorporated, official distributor of Chang'an Vehicles, has brought in an initial five models to compete in five market segments. The Alspin Subcompact Sedan, the CS35 Plus Subcompact SUV, the CS75 Plus Compact SUV, the CS95 seven-seater midsize SUV, and the Iado EV460 electric vehicle. Each of Chang'an's five models made available comes with features unique in respective segments, according to Chang'an Motor Philippines. The Alsvin comes with sunroof, cruise control, blind spot and rear cameras, tire pressure monitoring system, and leather seats. The CS35 Plus subcompact SUV comes with panoramic sunroof, engine remote start, passive keyless entry, blind spot and rear cameras, 10-inch touchscreen display, and 7-speed DCT. The CS75 Plus Compact SUV features a panoramic sunroof, 360-degree panoramic camera, engine remote start, 12-inch touchscreen, 7-inch digital cluster, cruise control, triple drive modes, and six airbags. The CS95 midsize SUV comes with a 2-liter turbocharged GDI engine, 6-speed automatic transmission, 12.3-inch touchscreen, 10-inch digital instrument cluster, 360-degree high-definition panoramic camera, and panoramic sunroof. The Ayado EV460 comes with most of the amenities already mentioned, plus six airbags, electric stability control, leather seats, and more. The Chang'an vehicles are now available at 15 dealerships in the country and 29 sales outlets now in operation. And Chang'an Motor Philippines plans to upgrade the sales outlets into full service dealerships. <music> Kia Philippines has recently opened portals to Kia Virtual Showroom, which it says gives customers a 100% worry and risk-free and enjoyable alternative experience of viewing and shopping for Kia vehicles right in the comfort and safety of their homes. Kia then aired four reasons to visit the digital showroom. One, it has browser-friendly layout. The Kia virtual showroom makes the online visitor feel right at home, like they were in the comfortable, expansive customer lounge of the dealer. Upon entering the Kia Virtual Showroom, 
clients may easily browse through the models based on vehicle types. 2. It comes with all-around action. By tapping on the model vehicle, the client can choose to check the vehicle's exterior and interior with a 360-degree viewer. 3. It provides info on demand. While visitors get the full view of the Kia vehicles, the virtual showroom also provides relevant information while they browse the interactive display using profusely positioned touch points. 4. It provides smooth transit to the physical world. The virtual showroom comes with a Find a Dealer tab to help clients locate the nearest Kia Partner dealer and begin the process of buying their dream Kia vehicle. Toyota Motor Philippines is going all in with its bets in a bid to win, perhaps another triple crown in sales even in the year of the pandemic. These bets include the refreshed Rush lineup. Interestingly enough, the E-grade variant of the Rush that has gotten the most number of upgrades. The Rush E now comes with three rows of seats for seven, as well as a reverse camera. This means Toyota now offers an all seven-seater Rush lineup. All variants retain key rush features like the high 220mm ground clearance, 7-inch infotainment system, back sonar, plus safety features like 6 SRS airbags, anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control, and more. Even with the upgrades, the Toyota Rush 1.5e retails at 1,023,000 pesos for the automatic and 983,000 pesos for the manual transmission variant. Toyota believes that at these points, the Rush E-Grade retains its position as a modern, stylish, spacious, efficient, yet reasonably priced family vehicle. The refreshed all-seven-seater Rush lineup now retails at all 70 of Toyota dealerships across the country. Introduced in the Philippines in 2018, the Rush quickly cemented its position as one of Toyota's best-selling models. TMP sold more than 15,000 units of the Rush in 2019, making it the best-selling entry SUV model of the year. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. every moment, even the unexpected ones. The all-new Ford Territory. Own the moment. Live extra with the new Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Choose your destination, your rocket. Choose ignition. Choose your world. Choose the X1. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head.
One was launched locally, just after authorities began to ease community quarantine restrictions. The other was launched much more recently, as the local automotive industry began aggressive campaigns to get people buying vehicles again. We're talking about the Isuzu D-Max Bundok 4x4 and the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete 4x4. Both obviously aimed at the same target market. Head-to-head -head pits them in a spec-to-spec -spec compare. Pickup truck makers and distributors have discovered that there is a market for pickups made to look like it could blaze trails in all sorts of terrain. And not only to look like they could, but also have the necessary gear to do so. Hence, the Raptor, the Bunda, and lately, the Athlete. This edition's head-to-head -head pits the Isuzu D-Max Bundok 4x4 against the Mitsubishi Strata Athlete 4x4 in a spec-to-spec -spec Comparo. Isuzu bulked up the D-Max and called it the Bundok, with thicker bumpers and fenders. The D-Max Bundok measures 5,295 millimeters long, 1,860 millimeters wide, and with roof rail included, 1,900 millimeters at its highest point. The wheelbase is a long 3,095 millimeters. Minimum ground clearance is placed at 247 millimeters. The D-Max Bundok comes with bi-LED projector headlamp with integrated daytime running lights, dark gray radiator grill engine hood garnish, front bumper guard, exterior body graphics featuring the word Bundok and a representation of Mount Apple over fender, side molding, steel honeycomb side steps, Bundok logo, roof rail, LED rear combination lights. The Bundok also comes with 265 by 70 R17 all-terrain tires wrapped around 17-inch matte black alloy wheels. These are mounted on a suspension system featuring independent double wishbones with coil springs in front and semi-elliptical leaf springs in the rear and both using monotube nitrogen charge shock absorbers. Mitsubishi went for height, bold body graphics, and blacked out features to separate the Strata Athlete from the GLS and the rest. The Strata Athlete is 5,300 millimeters long, 1,815 millimeters wide, and 1,795 millimeters tall. After it raised the ground clearance, to 220 millimeters. The wheelbase remains at 3,000 millimeters long. The athlete retains the chiseled hood and squared front fender that frame the headlights with halogen fog lamps, an LED daylight running light, the bold grille, large lower air intake, and muscular bumper with integrated skid plate, but freely used black paint on roof, radiator grille, rear bumper, tailgate grip, styling bar with bed liner, step board, as well as the splash of graphics. Also painted black are the 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 265 by 60 R18 110H tires. The raised suspension features double wishbone with coil springs and stabilizer bar in front and rigid elliptical leaf springs with telescopic shock absorber in the rear. The D-Max Bundok 4x4 is powered by a four-cylinder blue-powered diesel engine with turbocharger and intercooler that generates 177 PS at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 380 Nm of torque at 1,800 to 2,800 RPM. All that power and torque drives the two rear wheels or all four wheels via six-speed manual transmission with gear shift indicator. With either MT or AT, the Bundok comes with a Terrain Command Select dial that makes shifting from 2 to 4 wheel drive easy even up to 100 km per hour. Stopping power comes from a brake system using front ventilated discs and leading trailing drums in the rear. The Strata Athlete is powered by the 4N15 engine with 2.4 liter displacement, DOHC, 16 valves, variable geometry turbo, 
Mitsubishi Innovative Valve Timing Electronic Control and Electronic Common Rail Direct Injection Fuel System. It generates 181 horsepower at 3,500 RPM and 430 newton meters of torque at 2,500 RPM. The Athlete 4x4 comes with Super Select 4-Wheel Drive 2 system that allows easy switching from various 2-wheel drive or 4-wheel drive modes. 2H, 4H, 4H LC with lock center differential. 4-wheel drive low range with lock center differential. Stopping power also comes from brake system using front ventilated discs and leading trailing drums in the rear. The D-Max Bundock Roomy Double Cab features perforated leather upholstery for the seats. The front bucket seats have adjustable headrests, back pockets, and convenience hooks. The rear seat for three, split 60-40, has two adjustable headrests and fold-down center armrest. The three-spoke steering wheel also features leather and comes with controls for audio and hands-free mobile phone. The electroluminescent instrument cluster features a multi-information display. Convenience features include passive entry with push start stop system, automatic climate control, power windows and door locks, 15 storage compartments, 10 cup and bottle holders, 12 volt accessory sockets, 3 USB charging ports. Infotainment comes from a system using an 8-inch full-touch monitor and plays CD, DVD, and radio tuner. It also comes with Bluetooth and iPod connectivity, a navigation system, as well as an auxiliary inject, USB portal, and AVN. The Strata Athlete also features leather upholstery, black-orange with stitching for seats, gear shift panel and knob, and parking brake lever. The driver's seat gets 8-way power adjust function. The rear seat backs comes with pull-down center armrest with twin cup holders. The leather wrap steering wheel also comes with controls for audio and cruise control, as well as magnesium alloy paddle shifters. Convenience features include, among others, a keyless operating system with start-stop engine button, air conditioning, power windows, and door locks. Infotainment uses a touchscreen multimedia system with GPS navigation and complemented by a reverse camera. The Isuzu D-Max Bundok comes with a lot of active and safety features which include among others anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, brake override system, electronic stability control, traction control system, Hill Start Assist and Hill Descent Control. It also comes with reverse sensors and cameras. Other safety features include dual airbags, ELR seat belts for five passengers, child seat tethers, and childproof rear door locks. The Strata Athlete comes with a number of driver assist technologies, including among others, Mitsubishi Active Stability and Traction Control forward collision mitigation system, blind spot warning with lane change assist, rear cross traffic alert, ultrasonic misceleration mitigation system, trailer stability assist, hill descent control, hill start assist, multi around monitor with guiding and expected course line, auto high beam, anti-lock brake system, and electronic brake force distribution. Other safety features include reinforced impact safety evolution, a rise body, seven SRS airbags, three-point ELR seatbelts for all five occupants in the pickup. Many are looking forward to the pickup war heating up. Perhaps promos are going to be more aggressive. Perhaps dealers will offer more freebies. But as they are now, the Bundok and the Athlete are quite attractive to pick up buyers.
fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Ilustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Ilustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Ilustrado Restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Seize every moment, even the unexpected ones. The all-new Ford Territory. Own the moment. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Honda Cars Philippines joined the club of local auto distributors launching cars online late in the game. Perhaps it was making up for lost time that the launch was a two-for-one. In this special feature, we focus on just one of the two Honda Cars making digital debuts the new Honda CRV. The Honda CRV can claim that it is among the pioneers in the vehicle segment that is now the most popular in the world. The shift toward preference for sport utility vehicles or SUVs began in the 1990s when automakers began developing and then distributing vehicles that offer the spacious comfort of wagons, the ride height of utility vehicles, car-like ride and handling in urban settings, and capability to tackle off-road trails. At the digital debut of the new Honda CRV, Masayuki Igarashi, President and CEO of Asian Honda Motors Company Limited, and Chief Officer for Regional Operations of Honda Motor Company Limited for Asia and Oceania region, talked of one of the main pillars of Honda's success. Launched in 1995, the CRV enabled people to travel in comfort. The model focuses on utilizing the space of a large wagon and the mobility of a four-wheel drive. To date, the CRV is sold in more than 130 countries globally and has recorded more than 11.3 million units sold. Throughout its five generations, it is one of Honda's main pillars. As part of our 2030 vision, Honda is committed to delivering new value for mobility to enhance people's daily lives while striving to create a sustainable and carbon-free society. We continuously develop and improve our products and services, utilizing technologies to help people to realize this. Honda will offer the most appropriate products to meet the needs of customers globally, including in the Philippines. The Philippines has the distinction of being one of the first countries to locally assemble and sell the CRV, 
soon after it began production and distribution in Japan. In 1996, Honda CRV was introduced here in the Philippines and has become one of HCPI's strongest sellers in the local market. Today, amid a market shackled by the pandemic, Honda is looking to boost sales with the introduction of a new and upgraded variants of already popular models like the CRV. For 2020, HCPI continues to be among the top 10 industry leaders in the country. We have already sold over 5,000 vehicles in the passenger car segment and around 2,600 vehicles in the commercial vehicle segment. The new CRV that arrived in the country has been developed and configured to meet the needs and wants of Filipino customers. Honda debuted four variants of the refreshed CRV. Three are seven seaters, powered by a 1.6 liter turbocharged diesel engine made it to a 9-speed automatic transmission, producing 120 horsepower and 300 newton-meters of torque. The fourth is a 5-seater, powered by a 2-liter SOHC iVTEC gasoline engine, mated to a continuously variable transmission, producing 154 horsepower and 189 Nm of torque. Honda fitted the new CRV with the latest in its arsenal of safety, automotive performance, and smart technology buyers have come to expect in high end SUVs. The new Honda CRV is loaded with its upgraded looks and features through its newly designed exterior, advanced technology, and safety features, particularly its Honda Sensing for certain variants, and fuel efficient yet powerful turbo diesel engine. Moreover, the new CRB maintains its spacious 7 seating capacity with just the right body size. With the upgraded looks and advanced technology and safety features, Honda Cars Philippines is looking to return the CRV to the days when it ruled the segment. The digital debut of the refreshed CRV signals the return of Honda to serious competition. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. The line between an MPV and an SUV has blurred over the years. Most of the time, you can't tell which is which. Perhaps it all boils down to how automakers want to market a 7-seater like the Suzuki XL7 Gel X.
seven seaters are sought after by growing families who need cabin space and seat capacity afforded by so-called multi-purpose vehicles or MPVs, aka minivans. Sometimes they are also called mommobiles. But some with more outdoorsy perceptions of themselves don't like to be thought of as driving mommobiles. The solution automaker came up with its to dress minivans as SUVs, sport utility vehicles. This may be how seven-seater SUVs became a thing. They now come in many sizes, from subcompacts to full size. One subcompact seven-seater SUV in the local market is the Suzuki XL7 GLX. The XL7 slots in nicely in the subcompact SUV segment in size. At 4,450 millimeters long, 1,775 millimeters wide, and 1,710 millimeters tall, and with 200 millimeter minimum ground clearance, and in external features and styling. Bold front grille, thick black wheel arches, functional roof rails, side protection moldings, front and rear bumpers with underside protectors, all point to the XL7's SUV aspirations. The LED headlamp design, the DRL looking like the sharp end of a katana, as well as the rear combination lamps. The custom 16-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 195 by 60 R16 tires all add to the sporty SUV appearance. The seven-seater SUV with a gross vehicle weight of 1,730 kilograms is powered by a 1,462 cc four-cylinder gasoline engine with 16 valves and multi-point fuel injection that generates 103 horsepower at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 138 newton meters of torque. The engine on the Suzuki XL7 GLX available in the Philippines is mated to a four-speed automatic transmission. It can sit seven adults comfortably on all three rows of seats. Fabric and PVC leather upholstery match the sporty interior accents and door trim using fox carbon fiber material and satin chrome. Even the meter clusters get sporty with red accents to the speedometer, tachometer, and subdials. The front seats slide and recline, with the driver benefiting from height adjuster. Second row seats also slide and recline, split fold 60-40. The third seat splits fold 50-50. Seat backs can be folded flat to a nearly even surface for added cargo or luggage space. The XL7 GLX also features a lot of cool interior features like ventilated cup holders beneath the center console, smartphone holders, auxiliary and USB portals on center console. This is aside from the other standard interior comfort and convenience features such as automatic air conditioning, central door locks, power windows, power adjustable and folding side view mirrors, leather-covered D-shaped steering wheel with controls for audio and phone and that adjusts for tilt and keyless push start system. Infotainment is also state-of-the-art featuring a 10-inch touchscreen that plays video and audio with Bluetooth and USB connectivity compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It comes integrated with rear parking camera. Whether on city streets winding countryside roads and expressways. The XL7 benefits from what Suzuki calls the new generation HeartTech platform that features lightweight but strong continuous metal frame that contributes to safety, lowers fuel consumption, provide better driving performance, as well as help minimize noise, vibration, and harshness on combination with generous use of noise absorption and insulation materials. The suspension system features McPherson struts with coil spring in front and torsion beam with coil springs in the rear, tuned to balance the need for a soft ride in city streets and a stiffer and stable ride at speed. The brake system 
using front ventilated discs and leading trailing drums in the rear is complemented by anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution for safety. Also adding to safety is the electronic stability program that detects and mitigates wheel slippage and adjusts torque and brakes to help drivers stay in control of vehicle. Hill hold control helps driver on stop and go, driving on steep ascents. Also standard safety and security features on the Suzuki XL7 GLX are three-point ELR seat belts for six, plus two-point seat belts for middle second row passenger, dual airbags, two ISOFIX child seat anchors, side impact door beams, door sensing security alarm, and engine immobilizer. The XL7 can certainly make a good case for it being a subcompact SUV masquerading as a capable MPV. Or perhaps vice versa. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's probably the most gus gus topic in the entire automotive universe changing the oil in your car. The most frequently asked question is, what oil should I use? And to answer that, very simple. Check your owner's manual. It's in there somewhere and it tells you what kind of oil that you should use. Just for kicks, we're changing the oil of this Mitsubishi Montero and then we flip to the section where it says maintenance. And here we have selection of engine oil. Now granted, this is not the most straightforward answer because it gives you a lot of different numbers and one look, most people would actually turn away and say, ah, I have no idea what this is and I don't understand it. But most other manuals will tell you the exact specification of oil that you're going to use. And it's always a number followed by a W, followed by a dash, and another number. And we're going to explain those numbers in a little bit, but if you just want to check it out, there are about a million YouTube videos out there that says how to explain and how to read these oil specification numbers. We're not going to do any of that, you can check that out, but we're just going to basically semi-dumb it down for everybody. Eliminate all the technical talk and all of that stuff. So this is your motor oil. Different brands, different branding. But the important thing is this one here, these numbers. SAE 10W40. Every oil label has this. Since we're in the Philippines, there's only two numbers that you should remember. These last two. It's either 30 or 40. Any of them will work on any car here. The first number here with the W, we don't care because W here stands for winter. And since we're in the Philippines and winter is never going to happen here. So all you have to do is remember, 40 or 30 will work for any car that's sold in this country. It doesn't matter what oil brand that you have, it doesn't matter who makes it, what additives, all of them will work, irregardless. Just don't put cooking oil in it. That's kind of a dumb no-brainer. It goes without saying that when you buy a car, maintenance is part of it. Your engine has moving metal parts inside. The oil is the film in the barrier that prevents these two parts from rubbing against each other too much. It's no-brainer to think that if you rub two pieces of metal together, heat will be generated and metal will come off. If you don't have any oil in your engine, you're going to have a very, very short engine life. So you have to change the oil regularly. It's one of the easiest and most sure-fired ways to keep your engine happy and running long. Now, as for oil change intervals, before, back in the old days, it can be as low as 5,000 because of mineral oil. But now, 10,000, 15,000, even 20,000 intervals is not a problem anymore. Almost oils right now are fully synthetic because that's what the market demands. There are still some oils that are mineral, meaning straight from the ground, they process it, no additives, no nothing, no further processing, that's mineral oil. Synthetic oil has other additives and Every brand has their own, the same way that one soap has luxury fragrance, the other soap has extra bubbles. These are the few things that differentiate the brands from each other. So that's where the synthetic comes from. The additional processing 
after the base oil has been processed. And by the way, as far as manufacturing goes, all oil comes from Saudi Arabia. There's no oil pump from Germany, there's no oil pump from France, there's no oil pump from the Philippines, no. All of these things come from Saudi Arabia. The oil manufacturers buy this by the barrel in bulk as the base material, which consists of 90 to about 95% of the volume of the oil. It's all the same. It's the additives that make it different. The same way that gasoline is, any brand that you hear out there, you hear it often enough, it'll work on your car. <laughs> With every change oil, it is recommended that you change your oil filter, but I will say it is required that you change your oil filter. So as the name says, this is a filter. Its job is to filter and get dirty. Once this is full of dirt and debris and from inside the engine, it has nowhere else to go. So where do you think it's gonna go? It's gonna go back inside the oil and goes in, inside your engine. It keeps going round and round inside the engine with all that dirt and debris. So 200, 300 bucks gives you a lot of peace of mind. And that's how you do an oil change. Pretty simple, it takes less than an hour. You can actually do it yourself at home. Uh, you and probably one of your friends. Then beer na lang yung pangbayad. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your automobile electronic magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy. Oh, 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 oh,